Hello, my name is Haley Burby and I am currently a sophomore at State Fair Community College. This fall, I will start the nursing program in hopes of pursuing my RN degree. The book that I chose for this project was The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Skloot. This book is a nonfiction biography book that was published in 2010. When first deciding what book to choose, I was looking for a book that automatically caught my attention, which this book did. When reading the summary and title, I was wanting to learn more about what immortal cells were and how they were found. I also wanted to learn how these cells were still alive today even though Henrietta had died more than 60 years ago. Another reason I chose this book is because it provided more information than just about her cells. The book provided a backstory about Henrietta, her family, and what they went through regarding her immortal cells. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks is a story about Henrietta Lacks and how her cells became the first immortal cells. Henrietta was born August 1st, 1920, where she grew up working in tobacco fields, where she met her future husband, Day. They were married on April 10th, 1941, and were blessed with five children. On January 29th, 1951, Henrietta went to John Hopkins Hospital because she felt a knot on her womb. She would soon be diagnosed with carcinoma of the cervix stage 1. She was treated with radium after her treatment. The doctor took a sample of her cancerous tissue without her knowing. This sample went to Dr. George Gay's lab where he observed, studied the cells, and realized they were immortal. This meaning that they didn't die and reproduced at a fast rate. The tumors continued to grow, filling Henrietta's whole body until she died on October 4, 1951. Dr. Gay continued to share these immortal cells without her family's knowledge or consent. Henrietta's cells became known as Hella cells around the world. Hella cells helped with many advancements in the science industry and have been credited for many vaccines and treatments we have today. For 20 years, Henrietta's family had no idea her cells were being sold, bought, and experimented on. The author, Rebecca Sklew, wrote this book to find out the history of Henrietta Lacks and how her family never knew the truth behind her immortal selves. One of my favorite parts about the book was learning about Henrietta and her family's backstory. Henrietta grew up working in the tobacco field in Roanoke, Virginia. Working in this field, she met her cousin Day, who later became her best friend and husband. Day and her had five children and later moved to Baltimore. Each of her kids had a different story. Lawrence was the oldest and helped raise his siblings after her mother passed away. The second oldest is Elsie. Her siblings never met her because she was institutionalized due to ep epilepsy and died at the age of 15. David was the third child and he was the first one who agreed to meet the author Rebecca Sklute to talk about his mother and what he remembered of her. Deborah is one of the main characters the book talks about because she was the one who helped the author write the book by providing Rebecca with all of her mother's medical files and the stories that were written about her throughout the years. Deborah was sexually and physically abused for most of her childhood. Deborah was also one of the only children who would talk about her mother and supported her mother's cells being used in experiments because she knew her mother would have wanted to help others. The last child is Joe. He changed his, changed his name to Zachariah and had many anger issues. He was in his mother's womb when she had found out she had cervical cancer. I also liked learning about why the author wrote this book. She wrote this book because she saw a picture of Henrietta Lacks in her college classroom and it said immortal cells. She was automatically intrigued so she started doing research but never found any information on the family. It was all about her cells. So she decided to write this book so she could learn who these immortal cells came from and her family. Another part of the book was a treatment that was used back then to treat cervical cancer. Radium was used, which caused charred, deep, black skin, and she had done radiation every day. Radium is no longer used today as a form of treatment for cancer patients. I also found it interesting that the x-ray therapy caused Henrietta to have acute gonorrhea. Hella cells made a huge impact on the advancement in science. For many years, her cells were studied and many experiments were performed on her cells because they never died and even if they did, they grew back at such a fast rate, there were always Hella cells. The first of many Hella cells provided was a polio vaccine. Hella cells also assisted with finding a way to detect AIDS. Hella cells were infected with HIV, which produces a certain enzyme that causes AIDS. 
Hella cells were some of the first cells that were cloned successfully. They helped scientists create the first animal hybrids. Hella cells were used to study the role of immunity in organ transplantation. Scientists wanted to make a connection between Hella's cells and the relatives of these cells, which would be her family. Doctors and scientists studied Hella cells and how they were related and connected to the cells of her family. This allowed scientists to start mapping human genes, which later allowed for the human genome map to be possible. Hella cells were also used to find out how, many, how cells can be immortalized. Cells can be immortalized by exposure to certain viruses or chemicals, but many cells that were used were never as successful as Hella cells. Another significant advancement was in making the connection between HIV and cervical cancer. Hella cells helped create the first monoclonal antibodies, which were used to create cancer therapies. Hella cells allowed for many advancements in science and inspired people to continue the research in hopes to have a cure for cancer one day. Due to all of this research, Richard Nixon signed the National Cancer Act into law and gave $1.5 billion for cancer research. Hella cells also allowed for the rights that we have today to be possible. During Henrietta's treatment for cancer, they had never signed any kind of consent form. Henrietta and her husband stated that she could receive treatment but never consented to the doctor taking a sample of her cancerous tissue. This ultimately caused a lot of problems which helped lead to what we know today as a signed consent form. When going to the doctor today, we have to sign a consent form which helps protect us. And we have Henrietta Lacks to thank for this. We also have Henri Henrietta Lacks to thank for the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath helps protect the patient's privacy, which Henrietta never had. There are two main organizations in memory of Henrietta Lacks, one being the Hella Cancer Control Synopsium, and the second one is Henrietta Lacks Health History Museum Foundation Incorporation. There is also a National Henrietta Lacks Day on October 11th in remembrance of her. I learned that Henrietta Lacks became its own species because the cells evolved separately from humans. The species name for Hella cells is Helichiton gartelli. Through the book, I also learned what immortal cells were. Before reading this book, I had never heard of immortal cells. The only cells that are considered immortal from Henrietta and her Hella cells are cancer cells. None of her normal cells ever became immortal. I learned that Henrietta's cells are immortal because the telomerase is constantly rewinding at the end of the chromosome so the cells never grow old or die. Overall, I really loved and enjoyed reading The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. One of the main reasons I loved this book was because it had both science and personal aspects that connected to each other. I also liked that this book was a real-life situation and none of the aspects in the book were changed or altered. I would recommend this book to others, especially those who might have an interest in learning about immortal cells. This book was a great learning experience to see how something that seems so small like a cell can make such a significant impact on the world today. Thank you!